getting out and moving, walking lots materially affects the volume of the hippocampal formation. It gets bigger as the result of, of exercise and the functions it supports get better. In a very important sense, you've reversed the functional aging of the brain. How important is walking for our mood, for our happiness, and for our overall mental health? If you ask people to rate before they go for a walk how, how they're feeling now uh, on a scale of one to five, they might say, I'm feeling at around about a two. And if you ask them to rate how they'll feel after they've gone for a walk, they'll say, meh, probably about a two. Then you bring them out for a walk for 20 minutes and you ask them to rate how they feel. They'll now say a four. Um, so we persistently underestimate how good a walk will make us feel. Um, and that's true even for people who dread walking, who dislike walking. Yeah. Our bodies and brains need movement uh, in, and that movement generates all sorts of wonderful molecules um, that feed back on our sense of well-being, that, that facilitate uh, good things in terms of our musculature, in terms of our heart rate, and in terms of what's going on in the brain. But you're a neuroscientist, and I know from doing some research on you that you have studied a lot of things about stress and depression and its impacts on particular parts of the brain, including the hippocampus. And that's an area that, that can get affected quite powerfully by walking. And what if you could expand? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think one of the great discoveries of the of our rediscoveries of the last kind of couple of decades in neuroscience is the realization that the brain is a muscle or functions like a muscle. Uh, it's plastic. If you work it, uh, it changes dynamically in response to, to what you do to it. If you leave it, 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 it tends to atrophy. So uh, the parts of the brain that are concerned with learning and memory uh, is a part of the brain called the, the, the hippocampal formation. It's also the same part of the brain that's involved in the processing of information about stress. Uh, and it's also very badly affected by depression. And here's, I think, one of the amazing discoveries. Uh, we now know with absolute certainty, as, as certain as we know anything in science, that lots of aerobic exercise, getting out and moving, walking lots, materially affects the volume of the hippocampal formation. It gets bigger as the result of, of uh, exercise. And the functions it supports get better as a result of uh, exercise. And you can demonstrate this in all sorts of ways. We've done studies, for example, with um, uh, sedentary uh, college students, and we've made them do forced exercise regimes on bicycles, on, on, on exercise bikes, and shown that uh, molecules that are expressed in the brain, uh, which, which float into the blood, uh, including brain-derived neurotrophic factor, go up, and memory in these students goes up. But even more dramatically, um, this capacity is retained right throughout life. So it's never too late. So I, I, I'll, I'll just pick on, on one very important study. Art Kramer's group in Chicago have taken uh, a group of uh, about 120 people in their early 70s, divided them into two groups, one who were just left to live their life as uh, randomly into two groups. They live their life as they always live it. And uh, the other group are brought out for a walk three times a week. That's all for about a mile and a half with a physiotherapist in small groups, groups of, of two. And uh, they're followed for a year or so. And what you see is in the walking group, improvements in memory, improvements in attention, an increase in the volume of the hippocampal formation, uh, an increase in the amount of this amazing substance, BDNF, in the blood. And uh, the 72-year-olds start to perform on psychological tests at the same level as 68-year-olds do. So you, in, in a very important sense, you've reversed the functional aging of the brain, whereas the other group who just continue their sedentary telewatching lifestyle, they continue on a pathway of decline. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. And, and I like the, the point you're making, that it's never too late. That's the important thing. Uh, and I, I like to suggest uh, that uh, you only get old when you stop walking. You don't stop walking because you're old. Have we missed what is sitting right in front of us by looking for more exciting forms of movement and physical activity? Is it, is it sitting right there in front of us? And have we, I don't know, is it, is it reflective of culture where we're at that we're always looking for the new gimmick, the new thing that's going to somehow, you know, reverse our, our, our biological age and get us fitter and healthier, whereas walking probably does all of the above 
and more. Walking is this astonishing capacity that all humans have. Uh, it's kind of like the superpower that we have that we've overlooked. Yeah. We've made it easier for the default to be to get into your car. What we should do is at all of the points of the day, whenever you're moving around, we should make it easy for you to just put one foot in front of the other without thinking about it. Yeah. That's what we need to do. You have shared some research that suggests actually if we walk prior to doing some sort of intellectual task, we perform it better if we have walked just before it. Yeah, and we perform it more creatively, uh, which is the other thing. We generate more ideas. So a very simple way of demonstrating that is, you know, to take a common household object like a, a pen, for example. And I ask you to come up with as many uses for that as you can in the next three minutes. And you might come up with seven or eight uses. You might come up with 25 uses. Uh, people vary and reliably vary in, in, in uh, this capacity, but it's a very good measure of creativity. Uh, knowledge workers, creative artists, uh, high-performing scientists will typically come up with many more uses for a common object than, than uh, somebody who's not uh, working in those those kind of domains. But here's the rub. Um, for a hundred years or more, uh, psychology has explored creativity in people who come to a lab and sit down and do a creative task. Um, what psychology has not done is asked, what would happen if we got people to move prior to getting them to do a creative task. And what you find is that if you have people do a short period of movement, walk for five or ten minutes prior to them, generating these cre new creative ideas, they generate on average twice as many uh, after having walked uh, compared to those who are seated. And uh, uh, the studies on this are very beautiful. They're very carefully controlled. There's one where they've uh, had people sit on a treadmill <laughs> on a chair and they've had them walk on the self-same treadmill. And again, you find the same thing coming through that walking either on the treadmill or walking around an environment, uh, you will on average generate about twice as many new ideas. Yeah. Now, here's the important thing. It's often suggested that creativity diminishes with age. Um, and that doesn't appear to be entirely true. Uh, but uh, what is certainly correct is that if you get elderly people or people who are older in their 70s to walk prior to uh, a creative idea generation, they will generate twice as many ideas as sedentary 20-year-olds who haven't walked. So it, I've already said it's never too late in terms of, of changing what happens in, in uh, side your head as, as a result of walking. Uh, neither is it too late where creativity is concerned. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? You, we're, we're seeing benefits for our physical health, for our mental health, for our creativity. Um, how accessible is that? You know, walking before you do a task, you know, whether it's walking your kids to school, whether it's before we get in the office, whether it's simply a case of, you know, having a break at lunchtime where you go for a 10 or 15 minute walk. It is, it's not only that it's going to make you feel better, it's going to make you more creative. And so many of us are trying to actually become more creative, solve problems that we have in our lives, relationship problems, all kinds of things. It's always better after a walk. Yeah. So the trick, at least the trick I use uh, is write down the few bullet points of what it is that you're trying to do. Um, and that organizes your thoughts into a kind of a schema. And then just put it down and go for a walk and come back to it. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. So you uh, kind of almost signpost it to your brain. brain. These are the four the, or five things, things that I need to, to worry about. Work on. Yeah. And then you forget about and it. Just for, go for a walk. And, and, and let your deeply you drink, clever brain do the do work, work for, for you. you. Yeah. yeah, incredible. And uh, if, if it hasn't worked as a result of the walk, sleep on it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, there's John Dos Passos, the novelist, uh, used to say whenever he had trouble with writing, he would let the Committee of Sleep solve <laughs> the problem for him. Um, and uh, it is clearly the case as well that for difficult problem solving, you know, uh, having a good night's sleep can often, not always, but can often facilitate the, the problem solving. And having had a good day of movement before sleep helps you sleep. Shane, I've really, really enjoyed chatting to you. Um, I think you've written a brilliant book. This podcast is called Feel Better, Live More. When people feel better in themselves, I think they get more out of life. I think this conversation in many ways is you're very, very strongly making the case that when we walk more, we live more. 
Yes, it's the environment. Yes, we'd love it if urban settings and cities and workplaces and schools could be set up in a way that makes it much easier for all of us to walk. Having said that, I wonder if on an individual level, you can provide some tips, some actionable tips that people listening to this podcast can think about applying into their own life immediately to improve the way that they feel. Yeah. So, uh, Always have a comfortable pair of shoes close. You know, if, if you're wearing high heel shoes to work, keep a pair of runners under the desk uh, so you can go out for a walk at lunchtime. Set your computer, if you're working at a computer, to have the alarm go off every 25 minutes, which I do, and get up and go for a walk around. Uh, if you find that you have to drive uh, your car to somewhere, park a, as far away as you reasonably can and walk that extra distance. If you're taking the train to work, as I do, Get out two stops early and walk that last uh, remaining distance. Um, those kinds of things, just very, very simple changes. If you're going out to get lunch at lunchtime, don't go to the closest shop. You know, use Google to help you uh, do the restaurants near me or the shops near me and try and find somewhere new that's a little bit further away so that you just get in an extra 1,200 steps here, an extra 800 steps there so that at the end of the day, Somehow you've racked up 10 or 12 or 14,000 steps and you haven't thought about it at all. Really hope you enjoyed that conversation. Please do think about one thing that you can take and apply into your life. Inspiration is not enough, you need to take action. If you did enjoy that, please do press subscribe, hit that notification bell, and why not check out this conversation that I picked out that acts as the perfect follow-up.